Praise the Lord. Good morning. Welcome for this very special Sunday service right here at Dominion Church International Mbuya. We are glad that you have chosen to join us today. And we pray that the word of God that is going to be preached today will surely bless your soul. My name is Enoch. And in the meantime, I'm going to kindly request you that if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly hit the word called subscribe, and then you can hit the notification bell, so that every time when we go live, you are notified, you don't miss out. And if you're watching from Facebook, kindly like this page. I just want to request you that you're able to share this link with those people on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on any other way that you can do it. Hallelujah. And I want to remind you that as Dominion Church International Mbuya, we have services through the week. Every Tuesday from exactly 6 p.m. up to 7 p.m., we are live with what we call the Bible study by our resident pastor, Pastor John Mbazira. And right now, as we talk, we are dealing with the book of Revelation. I want to tell you it is a sweet study. You don't want to miss that one out. And then every Friday, we go live from exactly 1 p.m. up to 2 p.m. That is the lunch hour time. And that service is dubbed as the lunch hour revival service. That one you can participate as the audience by sharing in your prayer request or any other thing so that the pastors or a team on Dominion Church is able to attend to you. And then every Sunday, like we have today, it is a very great Sunday. And that means that we go live from exactly 10 a.m. up to 11 a.m. I also want to remind you that please, you can continue giving by the number that is shared on the screen. Or also you can walk down to our main offices and you're able to give in your tithes, your offertory, or your seed. As I live here, kindly, I want to leave you with the Dominion Praise Team. That is called the Dominion Praise Ministries. Thank you. Enjoy the service ahead of you. Hey! I am so glad to be here right now. Let me see someone who is like me this morning. Let me see someone who is excited to be in the house of the Lord. Somebody shout for the Lord! a bit crazy hallelujah I want to make someone a bit crazy hallelujah let's get it from Romans chapter 8 from verses 28 it says and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord hallelujah when I say all things I mean all things hallelujah you might be feeling disappointed but all things work together hallelujah for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. If everything is working good for you, shout a big hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Some God, mighty God, you are an awesome God, mighty God. We give you praise, we give you praise, awesome.
Somebody just raise your voice and honor him. He is worthy of all the glory. Oh God, we glorify your name, Jesus. You are Jesus. Higher than any other thing. You are highly exalted. Highly lifted up. Greatly to be praised. You have wrought great miracles. And you're still the same. The Bible says he is the same. Yesterday. Today. And forever. He is still faithful. He remains faithful even when we are faithless. He remains faithful. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. We lift your name, Lord. Somebody just raise your voice and honor him. You are the most high God. The most high God, the most high God, the most high God, Bakatonda Banji, Nayetukuro Batu de Waguru. You are the most high God, you are the most high God, the great I am. We honor you, Lord. Sheila di Dabo, Sheila de Lado Sataye. Jesus, oh, we lift you high, we lift you high, oh, we bow before the throne, we bow before you alone, we bow before you alone, Lord, nobody else can take your place, nobody else can touch our hearts like you do, my Jesus, she led our satire. You're the most high. Oh, you are the Lord. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the most high. High above every other principality. High above all creation. How could creation be above you, yet you're the creator? Oh, you're the most high. Yes, you are the Lord, the most high. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the Prince of peace, Elohim, Adonai, El Shaddai. Jehovah Shalom, El Shaddai Elohim, you are the Lord, you are the most high, yes you are.
your awesome presence it fills this place for this is holy ground so come and bow before him somebody sing with me consume Sweet perfume, sweet perfume, your awesome presence, it fills this place, for this is holy this is holy ground, so We give you glory. You are awesome. You are wonderful. We acknowledge that in you we live, in you we move, in you have our being. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Spirit of the living God. We call you right now. 
we implore you, dear Holy Spirit, take your place of preeminence in this place. Amplify your truth in our hearing because your word is truth. Then we thank you, Lord of glory. And we pledge that after all is said and done, the glory, the honor, and the praise will be returned to you. In Jesus' name. And amen. 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 We live at a time where many of us that have come to the Lord live under this notion that they will not face adversity in their lives. Or they believe that adversity is not part of the life that they will live. And many times I wish I could tell you that it were so. That none of the problems that you encounter will surface in your life. I wish I could tell you that all will be smooth sailing. I wish I could tell you that you will live a very quiet life. No challenges. No obstacles. No laws in life. Nothing contradictory. That you will go through this life without facing any issues or problems. That you will go through life without any temptation or storms or adversity. But that would be far from the truth as we see it in the word of God. When our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Christ was living. He declared John chapter 16 verse 33. He says the things that I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. And he says in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer for I have overcome. Even before then David testifies in Psalm 23 verse 4 he says yes though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because you are with me. For your road and staff, they comfort me. He makes a very important point here to bring to us readers of the Bible that there will be moments that you will walk in the valley. There will be moments when you have a shadow over your life. But be of good because God is with you. Paul writes to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 where he says no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. And he adds, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But will with every temptation also make a way that you be able to escape. That you may be able to bear it. The point he drives home is there will be moments of temptation but God will give you the grace to bear it. Yes, he writes also that there was given to me a thorn. And he says, and I cry to the Lord. And God said, my grace is sufficient for, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
James writes to the church and gives us the attitude that we need to have when we are faced with the adversity. Chapter 1 and verse 2. He says, count it all joy when you will fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The trials that we encounter in life are a test of our faith. And he says, let patience have its work in you. That you may be perfect. Complete. Lacking nothing. First Peter. Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Peter, Peter writes to the church. And, and says, beloved. Do not think it strange. Concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. He is trying to say when trials come it should not be strange to you. It has come to try you. And in today's text we have before us a text that unveils to us what we should have. At the back of our minds, if we are to walk through the trials of life and come out of them triumphant, we take our text from the book, Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, from verse 22 down to verse 36. And the Bible says, immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into the boat and go before him to the other side why he sent the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were troubled. Saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out of fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the, the, the wind was boisterous, it was afraid. And began Beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus straightened out his hand and caught him, saying, Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the son of God. This is a text that provides an account. After a high moment in the lives of the disciples, before them, Jesus has 
fed 5,000 men. Excluding women and children. With just five loaves and two fishes. It is a high moment in their life. Something that has never been seen before. Something unbelievable before them. And what was amazing about it? They were participants in the delivery of this miracle. So they did not just spectate, but Jesus had engaged them in the in the process of making sure that this miracle happens. So they did not just see. They actually participated in the unfolding of this miracle. After this high moment, the Bible says, Jesus then tells them to get into a boat and travel over to the other side. And as they set off, the Bible says, Bible along the way, they encountered a storm. Encountered a storm when it is Jesus that has told them to get into the boat to cross over to the other side. You see, sometimes when we meet the tough times of life and you get into a tough spot, we associate tough times with being in the wrong spot. But may I declare to you today that you could be in a tough spot but yet you are in the right spot in life according to the agenda of God. You could be exactly where God wants you to be. So sometimes adversity does not necessarily mean that you are outside the will of God. Here we see the disciples. Had they have been disciplined enough to, to obey the instruction from Jesus. And as a result of following this instruction, they find themselves in the middle of the lake with Jesus on one side with the storm facing them and with the wind contrary to them. And it wasn't just for a minute. The Bible says in the fourth watch which is between three people 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. That is when Jesus comes to them. So from the evening, they are toiling. The gospel according to Mark, chapter 6 and verse 48, they paint to us a picture that even as they toiled, Jesus was seeing them. Yes, Which brings us to the very first principle I want you to understand. Because when we are in the midst of the storms of life, often we have a thought process that God does not see where I am. God does not understand what I'm going through. Here in the midst of the darkness, the Bible says Jesus saw them yes. straining. Yes. He saw them toiling. He understood their fear. Yes, he did not come to them when they wanted him to come. He did not come in the first watch. He did not come in the second watch. They were toiling in the third watch. And he was nowhere to be seen. But he still saw what they were going through. You see, I don't know about you, but when I'm going through a storm, 
Many times I have this picture in mind. The heaven should come at a standstill. And with sirens going on. Help should come my way. But I've come to understand. That sometimes in life. God will allow the storm to rage. And instead of calming the storm. He will calm you down. And let the storm rage. Here we see a very powerful principle. To you that has questions today, where is God when I'm going through all this? Does He see what is going on around? I want to encourage you this morning. You are not out of God's sight. He sees you where you are. And the Bible tells us he did not just see them. He came to them. He came right where they were. The storm had not ceased. The waters were still raging. He, that did not prevent him from showing up. What is the message? You are never just out of his reach. But he will come and reach where you are. No matter what circumstances you are faced with. You are not just out of, never out of sight. You will never be out of his reach. David understood this quite clearly. In Psalm 139, from verse 7 to 10, he writes, and asks, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Says, if I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me far. God is everywhere. That even where you are, stuck in the middle of that situation, he is right there. Jesus makes this declaration in Matthew chapter 28. Verse 20 says, Lo, I will be with you until the end of the age. The writer in the book of Isaiah says, can a mother forsake her child? And not have compassion upon the child of her womb? He says, yes, they may. But I will never leave you nor forsake you. The message is you are not left alone. You are not forsaken. Even in the midst of that storm, you are not out of reach from the help of God. We see that when Jesus comes, they are terrified. Because the trials in your life serve a purpose. When he comes to them, he tells them, it is I, be of cheer. He tells them to be of cheer without coming the storm. He tells them to be of cheer when the winds are still raging. He tells them to be of cheer why the boat is still swinging left, right, and center. The message is this. You have to have confidence in God. In spite of what is going on around, you are not moved by sight. We are moved by faith. And it is that faith that pleases God. He says, It is I. Be of 
What is the implication of that? The storms in your life will reveal Jesus in a different dimension altogether. When he showed up, they thought he was a ghost. Because their experience taught them that it is only a ghost that can walk on water. But help was coming in the person of Jesus using a route that was unfamiliar to them. They thought that from where he was, possibly he could speak to the storm and it would come down. But he shows up right where they are in the midst of their storm with a message of hope. Even now, where you are in the storm that you are faced with there is a message of hope Jesus says it is I be of cheer and the Bible tells us at that point Peter says if it is you Lord command me to come and the Lord says, come. Jangu. And the Bible says, Bible Peter Petel. climbed out of the boat ya, ya, ya onto the raging sea and began to walk towards Jesus. All the other disciples are still holding on to the boat and they believe they cannot believe what is happening to this joker who is now walking at just a command. You see, sometimes faith in Jesus Christ will take you on an adventure. Or oh, let me put it this way. Where God is taking you does not look like where you are right now. And sometimes it will take you to get out of your boat. To get out of the things you are used to. To get out of your comfort zone. To get out of the confines that you have set yourself to and follow what he is instructing you to do. When Peter set out to get out of the boat, the circumstances had not changed. They were still the same. The wind was still contrary. The waves were still boisterous. But all he did was to listen to the command. Come. And then he walked on water. And the Bible tells us that he took the first step. But when he looked at the wind, he then began to sink. And here is a very important lesson on faith for us. You see, we often consider faith in steps. And we have this saying, take a step of faith. But I'm here to encourage you. It's not just one step of faith. When you take the first step of faith, you need to take the second step of faith. And take the third step of faith. And take the fourth step of faith and take the nth step of faith. In other words, every step that you take should be a step of faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. It is not one step and then you stop. It is not two steps and then you look aside. It is taking step by step, looking unto Jesus. Because if that does not happen, you will sink. 
in the presence of the master. But I'm here to say again to that one who is sinking Yes, you began a business with a one million. And now your stock is a hundred thousand. The fact is you are sinking. But your sinking could be because you have not considered focusing on the Lord. You see, when you focus on the problem, you magnify the problem. The one that David says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Whatever you look at, whatever you focus on, you magnify. When you focus on the problem, you magnify the problem. When you focus on the Lord, you magnify the Lord. And when you magnify Magnify the Lord, then your problem shivers before the presence of God. The problem sends of God. We have taken to amplifying the challenges in our lives. And we take God out of the equation. Jesus turns to Peter. And when he pulls him, he says, Oh, ye of little faith. Why did you die? It was not about the waves. It was not about the wind. It was about your faith. Your faith that I care. Your faith that even in this problem of life, I am able to take you. We need to be focused on Jesus and not our challenges. This text brings to us the character of God in its entirety. We all know that God is all knowing. God is all present. God is all powerful. And we use the prefix on and say he's omniscient. To mean that he is all knowing. And we say he's omnipresent. To, to declare that he's everywhere. And we declare that he's omnipotent. To state that there is nothing too hard for him. Look at this. I say, number one, you're never out of his sight. That means he, wherever you are, he sees you. He knows what you're going through, which speaks to his omniscience. Secondly, I said you are never out of his reach, which speaks of his omnipresence. Thirdly, I said you are not out of his care. There was never a moment when his eye is not on you, when his care is not on you. And the point is because he is omnipotent. You see, it is one thing for somebody to care. But when they are not able to do what takes you out of the situation, it is another thing for somebody to care and have the ability to take you out of your situation. So where are you today? Are you in a difficult situation? Do you feel stuck? Do you feel abandoned? Do you feel forgotten? Do you feel you have lost the battle of life? Do you feel you have lost the battle of economic gain? Jesus is never out of sight. 
He's not out of reach. And his hand is stretched to you. If you can only focus on him. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the reminder today that you are never out of sight. You are never out of reach. And you are never out of our care. Lord of glory, there is that somebody stuck in their situation, stuck in the circumstances of their life, stuck with nowhere to look up to. Stretch forth your hand, dear Lord. Reveal yourself as the great I am in their circumstances. For somebody stuck in sin, this is Jesus is the answer. Turn to him. Reach to him. Cry to him like Peter did. He will come and save you. He will come and take you out of that mess. Just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you as a savior in my life. Today I have understood that I'm never out of your sight and I'm not out of reach to help. Here I am, Lord. Save me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and direct my steps according to your word. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now, if you say that prayer, you have been wonderfully saved. There is a number on the screen. Please call. Tell us what God has done in your life. And we will instruct you on the first steps you need to take. For those that have an offering to support the ministry. There is a number on the screen. Please give. And it will be returned to you in a measure that is pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shamel returned to your boss. Don't forget to join us for all our other programs. And until we meet again from Dominion Church International, we say God bless you. Shalom.